Welcome to the Tradies in Business podcast with your hosts, Warwick Bidwell and Nicole Cox. Divert your phone and grab a brew as Waz and Nick unpack tips, tales, secrets and stuff-ups from guests both inside and outside your trade, helping educate and inspire you to break the cycle of gut-busting and money stress and create a true trade business. G'day, listeners. Hello. I don't want. To, I want to come up with a different name to listeners, but I'm. I'm. I've got nothing. Peeps, fans. Then are they fans, or are they just here because they think maybe they can laugh at us again? <laughs> Everybody laughs at me. Oh, or I groan. That, I think that. Well, yeah. Okay. Yep. I think that we both are un, under that umbrella. Laughing or groaning yeah. <laughs> at each other. Well, uh, no, maybe they're all doing it at, at us. With Maybe they're doing it with us. That would make me feel better. That would be different. Well, they're listening. Speaking of different, Coxie, mm-hmm. I did something different recently. You do a lot of different things, Warwick. <laughs> and um, I, uh, I sold my motorbike. Yes, you did. After many years of motorcycling of all forms and... Uh, Absolutely loved it. Uh, I probably I probably quit at the top of my game. I got out while it was still great. And uh, I hadn't had a trip to hospital for a long, long time. But I thought, you know what? It's time to get rid of the bike. And it's actually got me thinking differently about things, you know, about my garage and about how to set it up, about what activities are most important to me. It sort of sparked a whole bunch of different thinking about where I spend my time and my money and the activities I do with my family. And it's, it's started out really as just a values based decision on, well, is this you know the best use of my money at the moment? I've got some other goals that I'm pursuing and it's kind of turned into a bit of a reassessment or a rethink on a bunch of areas, probably inspired some new thinking. That's a big lot of stuff to come out of just selling a motorbike. I oh, know it's cool, hey. Yes. Uh, other than the fact that I was depressed for a couple of days after I watched it go, but um, yeah, I I thought it would be good to chat today about change and not so much the change perhaps thrust upon us by uh, those external to us, and we've talked a bit about that recently, but actually using change as a positive thing and and even small changes as a way to spark some different thinking Mm -hmm. i feel like lots of us get stuck thinking down the same old pathways about the same old problems and how we go through life doing the same old things and having the same headaches and the same arguments with the same people and it all gets a bit same and even our response to new situations becomes the same where if someone presents a challenge we respond in the same way by getting the same level of frustration and anger and we just keep doing everything the same why do you think we do it uh i think humans are creatures of habit Mm -hmm. but i also think we're a bit mindless to be honest Mm -hmm. we uh i say the royal we and you can disagree with me listeners if you if you feel so inclined but that would be different. So you probably just do the same thing and just listen to this and roll your eyes and go and tune into the Joe Rogan experience instead. Uh, (laughs) He's got a shaved head. I don't. Um, I just think a lot of people go through life without really questioning much. Yet that's not how we are in the beginning, is it? No. You mean like as teenagers or? Or even as children, even as little children, I think um, to some extent, by the time we're teenagers, we've already been forced to conform enough that that just we become same same. Oh, that's mm. a big social statement, Coxie. Isn't it? I think I'm really qualified as a parent of five teenagers and young adults to make an observation in that way. But most definitely, my kids are very curious um, and unsure and questioning and unwaveringly so when they were children. But now, as teenagers even though they may be thrill seekers or boundary pushers, mm, I don't know that they're seekers anymore. I think there's been a a balance to conformity or a balance to same, same. 
I reckon you've hit the nail on the head with the whole conformity thing, which you may have triggered me, Coxie. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) School. It's just, it starts so young now too. Very young. Kindergarten, like what's that, three? Yeah. and, And I mean, we're literally being taught how to think about things. We're taught how to interpret the world by people who, supposedly know what's best for us as a three-year-old kid. And Mm. yet the whole system has been designed by people often who don't live in the world that we live in. They're not small business owners and never will be. They probably haven't experienced a lot of struggle or challenge, to be honest. Not when, not when you sort of think about it comparatively speaking, Mm. you've even got a, have a look at the moment at the whole uh, COVID stuff and um, the people who are making decisions have got guaranteed jobs full off. Mm. They're not feeling any discomfort in any of this. I had a very interesting conversation with someone yesterday actually who um, I can't say is a small business owner but has struggled somewhat to find employment let's put it that way which isn't very accurate but I, I can't think of another way to do it without exposing who they are anyway we were having a conversation yesterday about some of our children because we have children of a similar vintage and this person's great wish was for one of his children to end up in the public service because that would mean both of his children were public servants and therefore safe for life and I thought it actually rather a sad wish as a long-term small business owner. As many struggles have I've faced, I've learned so much about myself, other people, the world around me, business, personal lessons. I mean, there's just so much to learn through being a business owner. As much on Tuesday as we talked about being a struggle, as I guess a bit of a warning to those who are thinking about opening or starting their own business. Mm. There's actually a lot of positivity in it as well. If you're prepared to take the time to look at yourself in that mirror that we talk about all the time and be um, accepting of the lessons that are being delivered, most of them will be about you in one form or another, you being the small business owner, me in my case. Um, I thought that actually quite sad, but also quite telling that, there is a big part of our community that is just looking for safety rather than for challenge or adventure or flexibility or any of the things I suppose as small business owners we're looking for. Mm. So, so what do you reckon is going on there, Coxie? Uh, well, I have, I'm obviously very privileged to understand more about this particular child and I feel it's a safety net for this person. And I wonder if that, on a broader sense is true. It's safe to be employed or reasonably safe to be employed. It's very safe to be employed in a government type position. Mm. I wonder if that's, you know, some of us do play it safe and the same can be said about change and embracing change. It's not safe when we have to change. It's different. It feels pineapple and uncomfortable and you're forced to look at things a little differently. Is that a, po- is that a negative? I, I, don't really know i think nine times out of ten it turns into a positive in one form or another should you choose to accept it as such your mission should you choose (laughs) to accept it is to keep listening to this episode (laughs) yeah it's it's a funny old thing isn't it our comfort zones and safety and i have definitely become more cynical as i have gathered more years under my belt coxie and I have been asked a lot by clients and followers and just people in business in general about employees and customers and all of the problems that face um, you listening to this podcast. And a lot of it is in people trying to understand other people and why they do the things they do and how to work with them and how to get more out of them. And honestly, I just can't, come up with anything better than the fact that humans are inherently lazy and will avoid pain and struggle and suffering and work at not all costs, but at a cost that they deem appropriate to pay, whether that's with their time or their resistance to change or whatever. And, 
And yet humans have this ridiculously high capacity to endure suffering. It's, it's this weird paradox between avoidance of suffering. And yet we have this incredible capacity to endure suffering, which stops us from changing to get away from the suffering that we all don't want to experience in the first place. It just, it boggles my brain sometimes the paradox and the dichotomy of, of human nature. And I think the more we understand that and the more people read and learn and delve into that, um, I think the better our relationships can become when we sort of get more of a sense of why people do what they do. I've, I've kind of drifted away from the whole um, doing something different to inspire different thinking but that in itself is a bit different. I mean, how many of our listeners have studied human psychology and human behavior as a business owner? I bet there would be very few. If you have, I'd love to hear from you. Um, I think it would make a big difference to how you run your business is if you understood more about human behavior and human psychology. I and mean, we see questions posted in our group about employees and often sadly it's complaining and it's, it's attacking and it's vitriolic what people say about employees, like they're, they're some second class citizens. They're just people mm. and they're just trying to take care of themselves and their families and their patch, just like you're trying to take care of your family and your patch. And yet there's this, this talk of employees, like they're, I don't know, disposable or something. And Hey, I'm one of the first to say if someone's not, working with you if they're not responding to leadership and counseling and coaching and motivation and KPIs and all that stuff, then you should absolutely sack them because it's not good for either of you to continue that relationship. Just like if you're in a toxic relationship in a romantic slash life relationship, then why would you stay in that for 30 years just because it's this crap about better the devil, you know, <laughs> that's just a piss weak excuse for not, taking action and making change, which I did for 17 years. So, uh, yeah, it's interesting, Coxie. I wonder um, how much of it is really quite primal in that when I think about uh, even my own relationships with staff over the years, there was a bit of an us and them thing for a period of time. And it was, you know, the staff were all on one side and, and the business owners, the two of us were on the other, I guess. It was almost like we were rival tribes. Mm. And I wonder how much of these default behaviours that we fall into, sure, they're certainly um, influenced by conformity. Hmm. But I wonder also then how much of it just leans back into whatever our um, primal reflexes might be, whether yeah. they be, you know, so much of what we do is actually primal when you start to break it back down and have a look at it whether it be jumping to the defense of our team members or our spouses or our children without really thinking about what's being said or whether it, that's a primal instinct to protect the people that we care about or whether it be, I don't know, on the opposite, jumping to blame others so that we don't have to look at ourselves. Again, it's a primal instinct to protect mm -hmm. ourselves. Um, hmm, it's interesting. It's got this got a bit deep, didn't it? <laughs> bit of a philosophy episode for you listeners. Uh, we'd be keen to know what you think. Um, I don't think anybody actually takes the time to, to respond to my shout out for, Hey, tell us what you think, which either <laughs> means nobody thinks anything or uh, I don't know. It's too different. Go mm. change. I don't mm. know. Mm. Um, tell me why you don't comment when I say, tell us what you think here on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> is it because you've got to do too many clicks and find too many pages to go to Tradies and Business Facebook page? Maybe uh, it is. That could be it. I've, I've, I've often wondered about podcasting and how hard it is to develop a relationship with our listeners, Coxie, because this is just a one-way thing. Interesting, uh, though, that we get common feedback of, uh, you know, when we, when we talk to people in the very first instance, the first couple of times we actually have a, a two-way conversation with them, we'll often ask them, and how did you find tradies in business? And I would say at least 75% of the time they've heard the podcast or they were directed to the podcast or in one form or another have come via the podcast. Hmm. So we obviously can create a connection. I feel connected to some of the people I listen to on my podcast. I understand that. But then having that conversation is a totally different thing. It requires a second effort, I suppose. Oh, geez, we really are digging deep today, Nicole. 
Yeah, this is lunchtime recording. <laughs> I've got a full belly. Have you eaten yet? I have. I did. Oh, I did see, we're both my fast. We're both um, stuffed full of quality food. We're feeling satiated and and nourished, and so we feel safe enough to delve into the big questions of the universe. Plus, it's just you and I talking, really, across the screen, <laughs> isn't it? So we're quite safe. Just chewing the fat. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I would be keen to know what you experience, listeners, with uh, change and do you find that you embrace it or do you avoid it? Is it something that freaks you out? Uh, whether that's, you know, in your relationships with other people, your employees, or is it just, uh, you know, you seek change as a way, like me, often I seek change as a way to perhaps freshen up my thinking and um, jolt me into a new perspective. I think it's become a bit of a habit for me to seek out change, uh, you know, selling motorbikes or starting new businesses or changing direction with content, whatever it might be. I think, I think it's, it's healthy and it's good and it keeps us um, strong and resilient, to use that uh, fabulous catch word for so many uh, campaigns around the place at the moment. Um, but I do think, you know, putting ourselves through different scenarios, whether that's picking up a different book that you'd never considered you would read before um, and just adding something different to your psyche, I think gives you more ability to approach the other problems in life in a way that makes them more likely to be solved. So what prompts to expand on that? what prompts you to seek the change or the difference? Like I know in the case of your motorbike, what prompted you? I understand that. My question to you is if this is something that you do regularly, what is the prompting force at that time when you're ready for that change? Hmm. It's a great question, Coxie. And when I've got an answer for you, I'll come back. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's actually become just a part of, who I am. I've, I've had some pretty high level personality and performance profiling done on me over the years as a, as a coach. And it's been a part of probably my identity is I take energy from change. And yet on the other hand, certain types of change just throw me for a loop mm. and I, I get cranky and frustrated mm. because things changed usually when someone external to me changes things um, without notice or without good reason. And, um, and that frustrates me. But in my own life, if I'm sort of the instigator of change, I draw energy from that. So new sports, new pursuits, new learning. I mean, crikey, I'm reading all about soil at the moment. I'm, I'm uh, learning lots about regenerative agriculture. We had um, um, Charlie Arnott on the program a little while ago talking about regen ag, but that was more about changing thinking. And that's what I liked about that episode. And I'm learning all about dirt and soil and organic matter and cations and magnesium and calcium and sulfur and all the stuff in our soil. I mean, I have a personal interest in it, but three years ago, I hadn't really thought about it all that much. So I think I just, I see things that are different to what I normally do or read and I go, oh, that'd, that'd be something to add. You know, I'm thinking about taking singing lessons. Uh, something different. Never done that before. I don't actually know how you find time to do all of these things. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think you uncovered something really interesting uh, there. And that was that you don't like change if somebody forces it upon you in one form or another. And that could be as simple as a client changing a booking without actually talking to you about it first, just going ahead and making a change, right? Not that that happens. We're not talking about anyone in particular here, but it's a quick example I can think of. Um, I too don't like change where I don't feel I've had a choice in change. Mm. And I wonder if what we're actually talking about here isn't so much change, but choice. Yeah, could be that, could be that. And making a choice to change or making a choice not to change. I made a choice last week to do something I'd never thought I'd do and I did it anyway. And I'll make a choice to do it again just to make sure that my opinion of that is correct or not correct. I'll, I'll allow myself a few times to learn. Um, but I made a choice. It wasn't forced upon me. If it was forced upon me, I wouldn't have enjoyed it at all in no way, shape or form um, because 
I hadn't chosen. Yeah, I, I think I'm learning to accept all change as opportunity. Mm. Even the change thrust upon me by others who are disorganized or um, self, self-absorbed, um, depending on who it is that I'm uh, having to work <laughs> with. You can guess who I'm referring to. No, I can. <laughs> but uh, you know, I, I probably just have more of a default setting of it's annoying, I get frustrated, and there's got to be an opportunity in this. Um, and it's just in doing that, I think it makes it a possibility that there's something good in it. Not saying that there always is, not saying I always reach that point. I think it's just entertaining the possibility that something good will come of this. Like there's, there's something here. Don't know what it is yet. Maybe it won't come for months, but there'll be something good in this. And just holding that potential for a positive out of what would normally be turned into a drama and a negative. We had a conversation similar to this recently where I shared with our listeners and yourself, although I think you're well aware of it, um, I have not yet been in a situation and I've been in some pretty horrible places where I haven't been able to find a positive. And I don't, it's obviously a genetic thing for me because it, I, it's not a lesson I've ever been taught. Mm. And my life wasn't that, hasn't been that horrifically hard that it's, I've had to teach myself that it's just inherent, I think. Um, so even in the worst of situations, I can find a positive, which leans into exactly what you're saying. And maybe that's a choice in thinking around times when there is change agree it's not always evident early on it can take months even years for you to be able to reflect on a situation and think ah that's what I learned from that or that's why that happened or if you get to a space where you're able to hold yourself account for these things that's how I contributed to that Mm. Um, maybe that's that's a way to begin to find those silver linings around those situations in which we haven't had a choice or, or we haven't had a perceived choice because there's always a choice that led to that situation anyway. Yeah. I think it's a bit like the whole hindsight Hmm. thing. Everyone has 2020 vision in hindsight, but so many people we chat to and I have chatted to over the years when they're looking back on a situation that was forced upon them supposedly lots of us are able to look back and go, you know what, it actually turned out for the better or there were some great learnings in that or if that hadn't happened, I wouldn't be here. And, you know, a lot of our guests, we like to ask that question of, you know, if you could talk to a younger you, um, what would you say or what would you change? And most of them are like, you know what, I wouldn't change anything because if I changed any of that, I wouldn't actually have ended up here Mm. and I wouldn't have had some of these other positive experiences. We can do that in hindsight. Mm. reasonably well but at the time i haven't always found it this easy Um, and i think a lot of us really struggle to look at a situation as it's unfolding and go okay this really sucks right now one day i'm probably going to look back on this and go there'll be some good stuff come out of this so i'm just going to entertain that possibility now instead of being miserable about it for three years yeah and then looking back and going, you know what, that was probably a good thing that that employee left me in the middle of a big job. It's always going to happen that way, isn't it? At a time you would never choose it to be so. So why not just embrace it earlier rather than later? Maybe it's the perfect time and we just hmm. don't accept that. So, Isn't it always the perfect time? We had this conversation yeah. earlier today when we were reflecting on some of our own decisions in business, um, we wouldn't have changed them because we wouldn't be where we are now in one form or another. And sometimes that's just in, with hindsight, understanding or taking the learnings after and being able to place them on situations we're in now. Um, Yeah, who would have thought that conversation we had earlier today would turn into a (laughs) podcast episode? There you are. So, listeners, uh, if you're willing, jump onto Facebook. Uh, any of the ways that you connect with us on Facebook, whether that's our public page, whether it's our free group, if you're a premium member, drop it in your group there, wherever you can grab us quickly on Facebook or even on Instagram. Just let us know what you think of today's episode, 
how do you go with change? How do you go with, do you use change as a way to inspire new thinking? Or are you like the old was that used to capitulate and think that the world was going to end because somebody didn't turn up for the meeting uh, on time? And, uh, you know, let us know what you think. I think, Coxie, that it's like everything else we talk about here on the podcast. If I strip it all back, it's another muscle to, to strengthen. And it's the muscle of, wow, this is not going how I thought it was going to, or this has changed, or you know, something external has happened that I didn't foresee. And rather than do what most human beings do, which is get sucked into the drama and the negativity and the, the suffering side of it, the complaining, the victimhood, rather than sort of spiral off down that path of actually go, okay, this is really shit. And I'm not happy about this. I mean, I'm not saying don't have emotions. Mm. I'm just suggesting to you listeners that perhaps you acknowledge that you feel like shit about it and that you're angry and it's a big change and maybe something good could come out of this because I think it's that, that process, that thought process that actually allows creativity and innovation and adaptation and all the stuff that we've been talking about on planet COVID in how the heck we're going to live in this new world that we've got where you're not allowed to go outside. Uh, <laughs> so you know, I'm just, I'm just challenging people to, to perhaps be a little more mindful when they come across these scenarios. That was uh, far deeper than I could have ever <laughs> predicted when we decided to do a podcast episode today. I hope we you enjoyed that. <laughs> we did change it. We change a lot of things a lot of the time. <laughs> I, we'd love to hear from you. We'd, we'd love you to change something in your behaviour and please uh, come and join us in one of our groups or one of our platforms and let us know what you think because it's important mm. to us to get your feedback. We create this content assuming that you're enjoying it because you're still listening and our downloads are still high however if there's something else you'd like us to talk about please let us know if you prefer not to hear about particular subjects we'd love to know uh you can help change the shape of the tradies and business podcast to be more like what suits you and then one day coxie and i can look back and go you know what Maybe that was a good thing after all that we got all of that negative feedback from our listeners. <laughs> <laughs> negative feedback, some of the most powerful feedback in the world, but that's a whole nother podcast yes. episode. Ooh, yeah, tasty. <laughs> we hope you've enjoyed today's uh, philosophy and deep dive into a topic. Uh, if you'd like to hear more of this, let us know, as Coxie said, and uh, we look forward to bringing more content to you. Stat. Thanks for listening. Very, very- You've been listening to the Tradies and Business Podcast with Warwick Bidwell and Nicole Cox. Find out more about today's guest, tools for your trade business and other cool stuff at tradiesandbusiness.com.au.